Hey guys and welcome to How to Gastro. In today's video, we will be talking about stomach cancer, which is also commonly known as gastric cancer. So let's get started. So what is gastric cancer? Stomach cancer, also known as gastric cancer, is a malignant transformation of the cells that form the inner lining of the stomach. Gastric cancer is the third most common cause of deaths by cancer in the world. In the majority of cases, treatment is very difficult because most of the patients only seek medical advice when their disease has advanced. So as you guys may know, the stomach wall is made up of four main layers and that is the mucosa, submucosa, the muscular layer and the serosal layer. So now we're talking about gastric cancer or stomach cancer, which is cancer that forms in this little bad boy down here, which is known as the stomach. And this cancer is formed or the beginning of its process occurs in this mucosal layer, which is the innermost layer of the stomach. So as we said, the mucosa, submucosa, muscular layer and then serosal in the order of innermost to outermost so we have the innermost which is the mucosa and that's a little section uh, magnified from the stomach wall so as you can imagine we have the cancer cells which begin to divide from our definition as we said the innermost lining or the lining of the stomach which is the mucosal layer so do keep that in mind that's where the stomach cancer actually begins so what are the sites of cancer? The sites of stomach cancer are classified into categories on the basis of its relationship to the long axes of the stomach. So that basically means if I had to draw a straight line down the stomach, the midline of the stomach, we would have three parts, which is the upper part, the middle part, and the lower part. 40% of cancers develop in the lower part, which is this little area, 40% in the middle part, so another 40% in this part, 15% in the upper part, which is this part, and 10% involve more than one part of the organ. So 10% of them actually include more than just one of these little spaces. So what are the causes of gastric cancer? Some cases may have an inherited predisposition. So some patients have a bad gene or a cancer-promoting gene that is passed on to them, and that's called a proto-oncogene. And uh, it's passed familially, so via their parents and their grandparents. Others are exposed to many kinds of environmental factors, such as a diet which is high in salty and smoked foods, smoking, helicobacter pylori infection, uh, a previous gastric surgery, having pernicious anemia, having adenomatous polyps, having chronic atrophic gastritis, having gastric ulcers, being exposed to radiation, suffering from obesity, and ingesting a lot of biphosphonates. So these are all some of the causes that promote the development of gastric cancer. So what are the symptoms that the patient may experience who has gastric cancer? We have some alarming symptoms, which include weakness and fatigue, vomiting of blood or having blood in the stool and this is usually a darker stool because the stomach is a bit in the upper digestive system so it still has to pass through that whole entire intestine and colon before it's passed out through the anus so usually these stools of these patients are more dark so they're a dark tarry color and they may also have uh, fresh blood in stool if they have excessive bleeding from their tumor some less alarming symptoms are indigestion or heartburn, pain or discomfort in the abdomen, nausea and vomiting, particularly vomiting up solids shortly after eating, uh, diarrhea or constipation, bloating of the stomach after meals, and a loss of appetite. So we're not saying the less alarming symptoms are less significant. We're just saying that the less alarming symptoms could be associated with many other pathologies, such as gastritis or peptic ulcer disease or an H. pylori infection per se. So the more alarming ones is the weight loss and the, bloods, the blood in the stool and of course the weakness and fatigue. So are there any classical tumor markers in gastric cancer? And the answer to that question is yes. In gastric cancer, the most used tumor markers are CA50, the carcinoembryonic antigen or CEA antigen, and the cancer-related antigen 19.9, .9, which
which is CA19.9. .9. But something to note about these tumor-specific markers is that the clinical value of these markers is not very useful because these markers mainly detect advanced gastric cancer for which only palliative treatment is available. So when these tumor markers become high enough uh, to be detected, it usually is a sign of a very advanced disease. And at that point, in terms of treatment for the patient, we don't really have that many options available. So it, they, even though there are some tumor markers, they don't help us in that great of a deal. So now let's talk about the different types of gastric cancers. So the first type of gastric cancers are the adenocarcinomas, and they develop within the cells of the innermost lining of the stomach, and this type of tumor constitutes 90 to 95% of all gastric malignancies. So this is actually the most common type, which are the gastric adenocarcinomas. And you can see it has developed in this picture here inside that stomach. And this is what it looks like on endoscopic view. So you can see that tumor growing out of that mucosal layer there. Another type of tumor that may affect the stomach is the lymphomas. And the lymphomas are cancers of the immune system tissue that may start anywhere in the lymph tissues, so even in the lymph tissues that are found within the stomach. And lymphomas in the stomach are rather rare and account for 4% of all stomach cancers. Continuing with the different types of gastric tumors, we have the gastrointestinal stromal tumors or the GISTs. And they are a rare type of stomach cancer that starts from a special cell found in the lining of the stomach and these are called the interstitial cells of cardial. And under a microscope, the GIST cells look similar to muscle or nerve cells. These tumors may develop throughout the digestive tract, but 60 to 70% of them occur in the stomach. And the last form of gastric tumors could be the carcinoid tumors, and they typically start in the hormone-producing cells of the stomach, and they do not usually spread to different organs and account for only about 3% of gastric cancer incidence. So how is stomach cancer diagnosed? So of course we will have our patient presenting with a history of specific signs and symptoms. Like we said earlier, we mentioned a few vomiting blood or having blood in their stool, unexplained weight loss, pain and discomfort in the abdomen, fatigue, and so on. So that's the first thing that leads us towards this diagnosis. And one of the diagnostic tools we can use is the upper GI endoscopy. And this has a diagnostic accuracy of about 95%. So during this test, a scope is passed into the stomach, which allows abnormal areas to be noted and biopsied. So you can see on my picture on the left, we have this little scope, which is a wire with a tiny camera at the end of it. It's passed down into the stomach, and we are able to notice and mark out those specific cancer lesions. And you can see here, our endoscopist can see on the monitor, this tumor that is developed in the patient's stomach. And one thing that's really great about the endoscopy is it doesn't only give you a visual image of the tumor that's developing, it allows us to take some samples or a biopsy. And this is very good because now we can run some tests on these specific cells to tell whether they really are malignant or benign or Another test we could use is the computer tomography or CT scan and this creates a 3D picture of the inside of the body using x-rays taken from different angles. A computer then combines these images into a detailed cross-sectional view and can show us any abnormality such as a tumor. Continuing with diagnosis techniques, we have the endoscopic ultrasound which can be done and this test is similar to an endoscopy but here, the gastroscope has a small ultrasound probe at the end that produces detailed images of the stomach wall. An ultrasound uses sound waves to create a picture of the internal organs. Another test will be the barium swallow test. And in a barium swallow, a person swallows a liquid containing barium and a series of x-rays thereafter can be taken. Barium coats the lining of the stomach so the tumors or other abnormalities are easier to see on x-ray. And in this way, we are able to diagnose the cancer. So if you see on my picture on the left, we have a barium swallow x-ray with a gastric tumor. So you can see the normal margins of the stomach have some kind of problem. And that is because there's a tumor that's growing in this area and in this area. And it's eroding into that wall deeper and deeper. 
and here we have the little tube that is supposed to be much thicker uh, but due to this tumor eating it up this is narrowing the stomach tube X-rays can also be taken and they are a great way to create pictures of structures inside the body using a small amount of radiation and this is important in say for example metastasis. So if we do suspect say for example a diaphragmatic metastasis we can use an x-ray to see if the diaphragm has been affected or not. So what are the spread patterns in terms of gastric cancer? So the cancer of the stomach can spread by direct extension, so which basically means one cell affects a very closely related cell, so the cell surrounding it or next to him, it'll affect those cells. And in that way, the tumor grows larger. It can also spread via the lymphatics and via the blood, which is the hematogenous spread. So direct extension is usually into the omenta, the pancreas, the diaphragm, the transverse colon, or the mesocolon, and the duodenum. So these are the structures which surround the stomach, and the primary tumor of the stomach is able to invade these closely related structures. Lymphatic spread can involve multiple nodal groups, so once it gets into that lymphatic system, or those lymph node groups, it's able to pass into any which nodal group it prefers. It could be the gastric, the gastroepiploic, the celiac, the portahepatic, splenic, suprapancreatic, pancreatoduodenal, paraesophageal, and the paraaortic lymph nodes. So these can all suffer metastasis from the original gastric cancer. The hematogenous spread is also common and usually results in liver metastasis. So I've put in a picture below which shows this is the gastric cancer which is developing right now in the stomach. And you can see these cancer cells uh, go into the bloodstream and then they are transported into the liver. So this blood goes to the liver and carries with it this diseased cell or this malignant cell. And therefore, the liver suffers from the hematogenous spread of the primary gastric tumor. So now let's talk about the staging of gastric cancer. The staging of gastric cancer is usually done by the TNM staging system and this system tells us how big the tumor is and how far it has spread. It also helps the doctor decide which treatment is needed. So the letter T from TNM stands for tumor and describes the size of the tumor. The letter N or node in TNM means the lymph nodes which are a network of glands throughout the body, for example in the armpits, the neck and the groins and they drain away waste fluid, which is waste products and damaged cells, and contain cells that fight infections. And M in TNM means metastasis, and it describes whether the cancer has spread to a different part of the body. So now we're going to talk about the tumor, or the T, in the TNM staging. So TX means the primary tumor cannot be evaluated. TO means there is no evidence of a primary tumor in the stomach. TIS means the stage describes a condition called carcinoma or cancer in situ and the cancer is found only in the cells on the surface of the inner lining of the stomach called the epithelium and has not spread to any other layers of the stomach. T1 means the tumor has grown into the lamina propria, the muscularis mucosa or the submucosa which are the inner layers of the stomach wall. T1a means the tumor has grown into the lamina propria or muscularis mucosa T1b, the tumor has grown into the submucosa. T2, the tumor has grown into the muscularis propria, the muscular layer of the stomach. T3, the tumor has grown through all the layers of the muscle into the connective tissue outside the stomach, but is not grown into the lining of the abdomen. And this is called the peritoneal lining, or into the serosa, which is the outer layer of the stomach. T4 means the tumor has grown through all the layers of the muscle into the connective tissue outside the stomach, and is grown into the peritoneal lining or the serosa of the organ surrounding the stomach. T4A means the tumor has grown into the serosa. T4B means the tumor has grown into organs surrounding the stomach. So the N in TNM or the node staging, NX means regional lymph nodes cannot be evaluated. NO means the cancer has not spread to any regional lymph nodes. N1 means the cancer has spread to one to two regional lymph nodes. N2 means the cancer has spread to 3 to 6 regional lymph nodes. N3 means the cancer has spread to 7 or more regional lymph nodes. 
N3A means the cancer has spread to 7 to 15 regional lymph nodes and N3B the cancer has spread to 16 or more regional lymph nodes. So the M in TNM or the metastasis staging, MX means distant metastasis cannot be evaluated, MO means the cancer has not spread to other parts of the body and M1 means the cancer has spread to other parts of the body. So again we said that the distant metastasis in the gastric tumors most frequently occur in the liver and that's because usually the blood coming from the stomach goes to the liver uh, into the porter hepatic system uh, so that all the nutrients that are absorbed from the stomach can be distributed correctly by the liver throughout the body. So because of this process the liver tends to suffer a great deal in gastric cancer. So what are the treatment options in terms of gastric cancer? Surgery is the removal of the tumor and some surrounding healthy tissue during an operation. So this type of surgery use depends on the stage of cancer. In early cancers that only involve a small part of the stomach mucosa, endoscopic mucosal resection can be done. So if it just involves the innermost lining and it's very tiny, we can resect this, meaning to cut it out by an endoscopic procedure. Surgery is used to remove part of the stomach with cancer and the nearby lymph nodes. We can also perform radiation therapy, which is the use of high energy x-rays or other particles to destroy the cancer cells. And we can also do chemotherapy, which is the use of drugs to destroy cancer cells, usually by stopping the cancer cells ability to grow and divide. And for, of course, I didn't put it in here, but I'll just tell you guys quickly, for very advanced stages of gastric cancer with multiple metastasis, uh, there will be no treatment that will be 100% curative or effective. And in those cases, we need to do palliative therapy, which just means giving the patient the best quality of life as possible. So morphine for pain, and we could try chemo and radiation therapy to help them along their journey. And that brings us to the end of the presentation. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and share. And if you'd like to download a copy of this presentation, you can do so by clicking the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.